this is my review for The Walking Dead. A choice-based game where your choices have literally no impact on the long-term story of the series. For each playthrough, no matter what ending you had in Season 2, you will start from the exact same spot in Season 3. The only, only impact is in dialogue. Maybe. Like You may have a little snippet of dialogue which has a reference to Season 2. It doesn't matter if you're on Wellington, it doesn't matter if you're on Carver's Camp, it doesn't matter if you're on your own. You will start off at the exact same point every time. And Clementine will arrive at the exact same dialogue every single time. You know what, there are some flashback scenes showing Clementine after season 2. Maybe you're thinking we can get some nice satisfying ending for our season 2 characters. Are you serious? You're gonna kill off Kenny and Jane? Just like that? Not only that, they've created a game with shoddy dialogue. You know what, I'm just not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna see what happens if I don't stay. Hey, my family, where are they? What did you do with my family? Just do us both a favor and pretend you're still asleep. I wouldn't start talking if I were you. You're lucky we do things a certain way. I'm already tempted to put a bullet in your brain for what you did to Lonnie back there. If we start talking, I'm gonna get angry. We still got a haul ahead of us, and I'm not about to listen to you. What the hell? Stop! No! Oh, shit! Oh, no, no! They continue to have frame rate issues. The same frame rate issues they've had since season one, which was about six years ago. They've made a new game engine, and yet the same issue persists. Some of the side characters in this game are completely unrealistic. I mean, Trip. Trip, Trip is a guy you will meet during the first episode. He'll be there throughout the season. <laughs> you can do almost anything to him. You can, and you do. You, you basically kind of in some way mess up his life. And yet he will save you. He will ask you for romance advice. You know, he'll start asking personal questions to you. Like you, you have to give him advice. And it just does not make any sense. Firstly, you've only met him for a few days. In this whole game. Javier has only met these people for like a few days and yet they all trust each other. It just doesn't make any sense. Look, Javi, I, I don't know if you heard us, but I think I fucked it up with Eleanor. We can talk on the way. I, about that, I, I don't think I can leave this apartment with things like this between me and her. It's just not right. I know you must have at least heard something. It happens. Especially these days. Don't worry about it. Thanks. Just shouldn't have pushed it with her like I did. Wasn't fair. Too much going on already, right? Javi, come on! Just give us a minute, pal. I'm sorry, buddy. I just I don't know what to do. With all that's going on here, everybody's feeling overwhelmed. Try to wait for the right time. Maybe she'll come around. <sighs> Uh-huh. Right. Okay. Good luck out there. And by the way, nobody should be asking Javier for any romance advice. Trust me. He's having his own problems right now. I mean, it's basically one of the main storylines of the game. The family drama. The family drama that you do not care about. Or you, you struggle to care about. Okay, so... Some of the side characters are a little far-fetched. But, but do we get to know them? Do we get any chance to talk to them, get to know their psyche, get to know about their background? No. You, you pretty much get to interact with them once. All the conversations go the same way. You get to interact with them. You, you talk to them once. You can't ask any follow-up questions. You 
can't, you, like in the season one, you could talk to a character. You can ask like four or five questions. And you get to really know the character. In season three, you ask, you get to talk to him like once. Get to ask one question. But then you have to wait until the next time you get to interact with that character. Which is probably, which could be like a two episodes down the line. You good? Nah, man. I'm not good. I know. Let's just get this shit over with and get to Richmond. What's going on in there, buddy? I'm in a bad mood, okay? I want it to go away, but... it won't. I just wish we weren't always on the road. I like being with other people. Just, we're in that car so damn long. The AC hasn't worked in ages. And then, it ain't my last damn take. But we still got each other. It's better than nothing, right? I don't know. Maybe just leave me alone. Okay. But if you want to talk later, I'm... around. Did I forget to mention you don't even play as Clementine? The character that you're most emotionally invested in from the first two seasons. You barely get to play as her. You get like four flashback scenes probably through the five episodes. You instead get to play as Javier with his family. A family that you, you don't care about at all. Javier's group, Javier's family consists of Kate who's his brother's wife. Gabe, who, who's his brother's son, S some moody teenage boy, you won't like him, trust me. And Mariano, who's his brother's daughter. You basically replace your brother. And as you will find out, your brother, who is ex-military, is an asshole, pretty much. Pretty much a typical military hard-ass guy. He's on you throughout. You know, now that you think about it, this whole game is compromised flashback scenes. Clementina's flashback scenes, Javier's flashback scenes. If I was to guess, I bet there was like 10 chapters of flashback scenes in this season. The one that nothing happens in this story, they're always in the past. They're always showing what happened in the past. You know what? Why don't I show another flashback scene? Sweep and scan. I was pretty worried about you back there. But I guess I didn't need to be. You had things handled. Like usual. That's because I learned from the best. I'm glad you're okay. Okay, maybe I'm being a, a little bit overly critical of this game. But hey, all I want is my choices to matter. That's all I want. In my choice based game, I want my choices to actually matter. As a standalone title, this isn't a bad game. It's, it's a pretty decent game. It's it's worth playing, you know. I think that's pretty much the the universal opinion. It's a decent game. You know, the the endings are, are pretty nice. It kind of comes together pretty nicely. You know, the, the, there's some good scenes in it. It sets up season four pretty well. I'm excited for season four. I'll, I'll be buying season four. And, and to be honest, I think the best way of playing this game is just to think of it as an old thing. It's not connected to the first two seasons. Just put those the first two seasons in the deep recesses of your brain. Just don't think about them. Just play season three 
as a separate entity. And it's not that bad. I mean, it's, it's pretty difficult to do that, considering how good the first two seasons were. But you, that's the only way to play it, in my opinion. But as I keep alluding to, it doesn't matter how well you end your game if the build-up to your game is cheap. To me, the game hasn't earned this ending. And as we saw last time, Season 2 had a very good ending. And the ending now means nothing. It's no longer legit because of what Season 3 is. If the choices don't matter in this game, what else is there to like about? The, the gameplay is really non-existent. I mean, we all know that. I mean, we don't play the game for its gameplay story and, and the, the emotional impact it has. I mean, it's, it's got good voice acting, as usual. It always does. All Telltale games do. And, you know, they generally come through with a good episode 5. Generally, that's true with all Telltale games. But, other than that, I mean, it just isn't, it just isn't all that good if the choices don't matter. And that's why it's difficult to comprehend what Telltale are thinking here. My theory is this, Season 3 was always going to be a tough game to make because of all the endings to Season 2, so they just decided to make Season 3 a filler series to plug some gaps in the story for the big ending, which is Season 4. I have even mentioned my biggest disappointment with this game, which is it's no longer your Clementine. Throughout the game, you will see Clementine make choices that you have no control over. The computer will make the choices for you. It just seems disrespectful. You have you spend two seasons with this character. In season two, she is your character. You play as her. And yet in season three, you have to take a back seat and, and let the computer make choices that you would have never made. Enough talking. Drop it. There's a herd out there and you're firing up a fucking And that's the biggest reason the why after I award this game a 5 out of 10. On this scale, that means it's average. It's certainly worth playing, but it, it just got far too many flaws and it just it reeks of being a filler series. If you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe. And please be sure to leave a comment.